Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome to episode number 57 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today's episode is a rather serious one. We've got to have a serious chat here about elimination diets. You've often heard me say that there is a danger to eliminating too many foods, and yet you're constantly bombarded by these incredible before and after photos of people who claimed to have eliminated a fairly large number of foods or food groups, and finally, quote, healed their skin. I'm not here to say that these people are lying. It's certainly possible that their skin healed up from trying a specific diet, but it's also the case that they are band-aiding a hidden biochemical or gut or hormone problem by removing certain types of food. Sometimes they've also made a bunch of other changes as well, but solely assign success to the diet when really all of those other changes muddy the water, making it difficult for you to know what actually did the trick. And then there can be the challenge that people don't often talk about, where they then get stuck being unable to reintroduce the foods they've removed without triggering a skin rash flare of their eczema or psoriasis, etc. It shouldn't surprise anyone listening to this that I've spent a lot of time cautioning people about this, that food cannot always fix everything and that there are some dangers to elimination diets that are too restrictive, go on for too long, and that ultimately aren't warranted. And yet many of these people look at me like I'm crazy because there are diets specific for some of these skin conditions that I talk about here at the Healthy Skin Show. Why would there be books on them if they didn't work? I get asked. Well, to some degree, those diets can help, but they don't help everyone. And let me repeat that. Those diets specific to skin conditions do not always help. And in some instances, they make things worse. So instead of me telling you about the dangers of elimination diets, I'm going to share the journey of Elaine, who is a member of my private Facebook community. She gave me permission to share this because she doesn't want what happened to her to happen to anyone else. I have psoriasis, and over the past eight years, I've tried every diet going from gluten-free to dairy-free, nightshade-free, lectin-free, paleo, AIP, and more recently, vegan. I wanted to share that almost two weeks ago, I passed out with low blood pressure and a low heart rate. The ambulance took me to hospital, and I'm home now, but undergoing tests to understand why this happened. I've also had diarrhea every morning since I passed out. My blood pressure is still low with a systolic in the 80s. It was 50 when I was admitted. The reason I'm sharing this is that I believe that my highly restrictive diet has led to many deficiencies, and I feel this has contributed to my ill health that I'm experiencing now. I have lost a ton of weight, which I need to regain. Please be very careful when taking huge food groups out of your diet. There are many other important factors to consider when it comes to skin health, such as stress reduction, sleep, and quality of food as opposed to food restrictions. I'm now eating meat and lots of other foods that I had denied myself. I will not adhere to these unsafe diets anymore. Obviously, some restrictions can be good, but not all that I had taken out. I don't want anyone else's health to suffer the way mine has, and I felt compelled to tell others so that they can hopefully avoid the same route. As I'm a fan of yours, Jennifer, I've seen that you're one of the most honest people who's been trying to get this message across for some time. I just hope that other functional practitioners realize this too before more people get sick. It's a pretty heavy letter, right? Well, Elaine, I want to thank you for taking the time, despite how ill you feel right now, for speaking up on a topic like this that is not popular. I'm appreciative that we found each other and that I can support you and help you share your experience with others. 
I'd like to add a few thoughts about what Elaine has touched on here. There is a growing concern amongst many of my fellow nutrition and physician colleagues about the excessive reliance on elimination diets. In fact, you've heard from quite a number of my guests and colleagues on this show, as well as on the Eczema and Psoriasis Awareness Week 2018, and you will hear this echoed again during the second Awareness Week coming this fall, that relying exclusively on food eliminations can be harmful. There's a lot that food can do to help you, but when you've had serious long-standing issues, Taking out more and more foods is not wise, especially not without the help of a trained professional. Biochemistry in your body is incredibly complicated, and your body doesn't make everything it needs to thrive and fuel these systems, which is why we need to consume them. There are essential nutrients like specific amino acids, vitamins, and minerals that you must eat and absorb on a regular basis. Without them, you can end up having problems down the road as your stores become increasingly depleted. Even aside from this, your unique history and genetics could put high hurdles in front of you that just simply aren't present for someone else. It's possible to have hidden infections that even if you don't have gut symptoms and that stool test you had run by your doctor through a local lab comes back clean, it's possible that there are bugs still there that were missed. Even those tests marketed to you, the consumer, to test your gut microbiome, can't tell you if you have infections because that's not what they're meant to do. Now, I'm not implying that you can't address your skin without help from a professional, but there has to be a point where no amount of Googling is going to help. It creates more confusion because the human body is so complex. I spent three years in grad school learning nutritional biochemistry and integrative nutritional assessment. I studied at least 30 hours a week for three years. And I can tell you that I still had a lot to learn when I graduated. And even now, I learn new things all the time. And so are scientists and doctors. We do not fully understand everything about the human body. Research is still evolving and creating incredible connections and opportunities within dermatology and skincare. I fully applaud you and everyone else out there who gets fed up, but instead of throwing in the towel and just miserably accepting that your skin is cursed, you take action to make meaningful changes. And I love that people are looking at their health and their skin rashes from a completely different perspective than just the conventional dermatology route of, oh, well, guess you're just going to have to learn to live with this. But if you're not seeing massive improvements after three to six months of eliminating foods, or if you struggle to reintroduce them and find that you're reacting to a growing list, it's time to ask for help. Going down the rabbit hole of just blaming food can lead to some very serious health consequences that can cause massive harm and land you in the hospital. That's why Elaine wanted to share her story, because this was a wake-up call for her that she hopes you never have to experience yourself. And I've seen way too many people in my clinical practice who've whittled their diets down to five foods. And not only do they not feel better, They become afraid of trying to add back foods because they think it could flare their rashes or it's got histamines or salicylates or FODMAPs or nightshades or any number of other reasons that are now contributing to a state of orthorexia and too many other symptoms to count. The hole can get so deep that relief from symptoms can take a long time. And I truly do not mean to scare you here by sharing all of this. Nor am I saying that you shouldn't give an elimination diet a try. But when you start cutting out more and more and more and more, and you're not seeing any improvements after three to six months, food alone may not be the right approach for you. If you've got any questions or thoughts about elimination diets and all the skin rash-specific diets out there, 
head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash zero five seven to leave a comment so we can continue this conversation. And I hope that you'll support Elaine on her mission as she begins her long journey to better health to share the dark side of elimination diets with our community. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the show and rate and review The Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform of choice. It's my hope that together we can spread the message that there are more options than just creams and pills for rashes, but at the same time having honest and open conversations about how to use natural tools like elimination diets safely. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.